Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Wibisode episode. I know that it's been several months since I've done one, uh, but here we are again and trying to do uh, some computer stuff and I haven't done some stuff in a while. So for those of you guys that enjoy this content, I hope that you enjoy this. So uh, I did do a, a, a Mirth video prior to this where, where I um, showed how to add a certificate to the Mirth you know, web portal so that you didn't get the certificate error. And in this uh, web episode, what I'm going to do is show how to create a Java jar file and how you can then add that to Mirth pretty easily. So without wasting too much more of your time, I'm going to open up VirtualBox. All right. Now, for those of you guys, uh, you know, smart people out there, you guys are like, hey, why didn't you just uh, install Mirth on the Macintosh because there is a Mac version? And uh, yes, you would be right, and I uh, could have done that. But I decided to install it in a virtual machine because when I'm done with this, I want to be able to just right-click on this and delete it and be done with it, and I don't want to have any remnants of this on my computer when I'm done. So let's go ahead and fire up this virtual machine. All right, so now that I have the virtual machine open, let me do an IF config and... And uh, 1.21 is the hosting. No, I don't know if that's changed since I got this originally installed. And if you don't know how to install this from, you know, in um, Linux, it's actually pretty easy. You can just download a shell script from the Mirth downloads, and it should work pretty out of the box. But let me see if this works. All right, I'm just going to take an educated guess and say that uh, this has probably changed its IP address since I last did this. So we'll go through all the boring stuff here now. Sorry. So let me connect to the, uh, all right. Now, uh, I don't have a host name, but I don't have a certificate. So we're getting all this stuff. All right, cool. All right. Let me just, uh, launch this cause I don't really care. Save. Fine. Cool. All right. And it's probably going to be one of these jobbies where I got to go to my security and then open anyway, open. And here it comes. Come on down! Now, if this is a real Mirth server, obviously I would get a static IP, you know, with a host name and a uh, CA certificate and all that kind of good stuff. But this is just a throwaway that I'm going to delete after we're done here. But it uh, looks like the IP address of this virtual machine changed after I got this set up. All right, let's see. What did I set that, that I do? Admin, admin. Hey, looks like I did. And obviously it's, it's bad practice to use the admin account for your work, but uh, this is not a mirth thing. We're just uh, doing whatever. So what I want to do, let me go into channels and it looks, you know, our default group, since I'm, I'm using 3.8, I think 3.5 or higher uh, has the groups. So we're going to uh, create a new channel and I'll just go ahead and create this HTTP Wibbits. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a channel that when you connect to it, it's going to go out to call some of the Wibbit.net web services that we've made available for previous labs on the website courses, and you can call them here. So we'll uh, set the data types. Uh, I guess it really doesn't much matter, but because this is going to be an HTTP get, we're not going to take in data. So we'll just go ahead and set all this to raw. Now, those of you guys that know Mirth, you guys know that this is a um, engine that would be used for typically HL7, things like that. Uh, but in this case, we're not going to be doing that. I'll leave this in development mode for right now. And just so I don't screw up my Derby database really bad for this test, I'll prune it every day. All right, source. All right, we'll make this a HTTP listener. We'll have it listen on 8014. I don't really care. And, um, it doesn't really much matter, I guess, because it's just going to be a get and we're going to respond back and the destination. We'll set all this up in a few minutes. Well, let's let's just make sure we can get it to work. So let's do a uh, wibbit.net uh, destination. And then here in the edit transformer, we're going to add a new step in the transformer. I'll just um, make this part JavaScript and I'll name this call Java class. And let me just do var response. I'll make it all caps. Response equals, um, hello. We'll just, we'll just go with the, you know, Wibbit.net classic. Hey, buddy. All right. And then we'll save that. Go back, go back. Let's see here. Uh, response content. I want this to be text slash HTML and UTF-8 response code 200. Uh, we don't have any authorization type. Uh, we don't have any of that. We don't have any of that. And the response is going to be, where is my, oh, I have to set it in the map. Um, 
sorry about that. Go here, and then it would be something like, what is it? Um, response map dot, what is it? Put response will equal response. Sorry about that. All right, go back. No, cancel. Source. Now I should see response. Okay, so the, whatever response equals is going to be what I send back to my client. That should work. All right, so I have 8014. So let me deploy that channel, and I should have a Brave browser up. And that was here, 8014. So it's going to be, it's not HTTPS, it'll be 192.168. All right, it just says, hey buddy. Okay, so I have a basic skeleton of my Mirth channel. Hopefully that wasn't too fast, but I'm gonna take an educated guess and say that if you're watching this, you probably have a little bit of an understanding of Mirth, because this is not an all-encompassing Mirth course. This is just sort of, you know, Mirth stuff. Okay. Let me minimize that, minimize that. All right, the next thing I want to do is open up Eclipse, if it ever wants to open. I think this is the first time I have opened it on this particular machine, so, yep, there you go, launch. All right, once I got uh, my Eclipse open, I'm going to, let's see here, file, new, project, Java project, next. All right, let's see, let's fill this in. Project name, I will call this Wibbit Mirth Project, just to keep it simple. Here's the JRE that I have on the machine. I suppose that's fine, because that um, is probably what is on the um, Mirth results computer. If not, then I could upgrade it. Let's see, use, all right, create separate folders for, yeah, it's fine. Um, and the rest of this should be fine. Let's see, next. All right, that looks whatever. I mean, it's all boilerplate, so we'll go ahead and click finish. Uh, do you want to open Java Perspective now? I'll just say no. I just want a boring old project, Eclipse. That's all I want. Okay, here's my project. All right, so first things first. Let's uh, close some of this stuff we're not using. I'll expand this, and we'll expand this. All right, under the source, let me right click. Well, if you have a two button mouse, I'll do new package. And I'll call this net.wibbit. Finish, all right. So I have my package. I'm going to create uh, a class. And the first class, this would be sort of my driver test class. I'll just call it main class. This way we can test it before we do anything. And we'll do a public static void main. Finish. Hey, look at that. All right, so. If I were to run this, I should see a console show up down here. Of course, it's saying, do you want to associate this as a main class? We'll say yes. Of course, this program doesn't do anything, but uh, we can at least see if it does, you know, runs. Well, I don't think anything happens. So let me actually do system.out.println to make sure that it works. Hey, buddy. Yes. All right. So we know that works. Fantabulous. Yeah, I always like that about Mac as opposed to Windows. Okay. All right. I'm going to create a inside of the same package. I'm going to do another class and I will call this class Webisode Mirth Java. And this can inherit from a uh, Java Lang object. That's fine. And we'll just go here. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to be adding some code that you're not going to be able to see me add, but I will provide the link in the description for what to put here because I don't want to waste too much time programming because I'm assuming you guys either know Java or you've gone through our Java class. And if not, go to wibbit.net, check out the Java class. Little plug there. All right. And uh, we're going to instantiate this class in our main method here. So if I were to, well, let me just use a shortcut keys. All right, system out dot print line HTML code, and I'm gonna have to add throws exception to get rid of that. All right, so hit that. Well, that's interesting because this is working on a. Oh my God, the dogs are still barking. This exact code is working on a uh, Windows computer, but it's not working on a Mac computer. So wonder if it would work on a Linux computer. So let's uh, comment these out. So since the code is 100% identical, I'm not quite sure why it wouldn't work here, but let's just do this. Let's do a file export java jar next, then I'll select my project and let's see, select my that and I only want that to be in there. Export class files and resources, fine. Okay, browse. Browse to my desktop, and I'll call this webisode mirth java dot jar, and save it. Finish. Okay. So if I go to my desktop, I should have this jar file. All right. So now that we have that, we gotta go put it on the servers. Let's go uh, open up our FileZilla client. 
and I'm going to create a connection here make a new site let's call this mirth test and we'll do an SFTP all right yeah so I should be able to find the location where this exists in uh, slash uh, USR if you install this using the defaults local mirth connect and I, I am using a remote desktop which is why you keep seeing the Windows um, cursor show up from time to time. So inside of here, there is a directory by default called custom lib. And then if I go here to my desktop, I can, I should be able to just drag this feller over here. Permission denied, of course. All right, so let's give myself permission on that. Okay, well, I'm gonna go my virtual machine. CDU local mirth. I sh oh, okay, it is under root and I'm not logging in as root. Let's see, if I were to do a sudo chmod777 to custom lib, All right, now I should be able to upload with no problem. Let's try that. Upload. Hey! Hey! And then on my Mirth server, I should have to do sudo service, is it mc service? Restart. All right! So then if I go back to my Mirth administrator, yeah, I'm gonna have to log in again because I just restarted it. Admin, admin. All right, sometimes it takes a second to get the service restarted, especially if you're working with virtual machines. Okay, so here is that. Let's go back to my channels. Let's go back here, go back to my destinations. Edit the transformer. Okay, so here I want to do something similar to what I did in my main before, but let's do var. First off, I wanna make sure that I can actually call it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to call lab equals packages dot and now I'm going, I'm just going to call it fully qualified net.wibbit.wibisode mirth java. And obviously I'm going to have to put a new in front of that. Okay, back, save changes. And deploy. Clear my log. Let's see if I can call it again. It, sh it should just say, hey buddy, again, which it does. If we go to my dashboard, refresh this, I have, okay, cool. But let me go back into my transformer. All right, so then if I do response equals lab dot get HTML, let's see if we have the same problem uh, calling that wet those web services here that we do on the Mac machine because it works fine on the Windows computer. All right, so deploy channel. All right. All right, and this is what I expect to see. So when we call this, it is calling a few web services that is generating something similar that we would have, you know, looked at in the um, in the courses that we had in, online. You know, if I click on this, it will launch into Wibbit.net into the course. But it's calling to check to see what curricula we have, and then what courses that are in there. And then when you click on stuff, it will launch in, you know, into the website. Yay! Isn't this cool? All right, let's see if we can real quick on the fly figure out this how it's calling it twice. So let me, if I go in here, if I go to source, and I should be able to say, this is an XML body, do not allow multi-part, include metadata, yes, and then set data type, XML inbound, okay. So now I should be able to see, to see the path that's being called. So if I deploy that, and let's call it again. All right, so this should be called twice, which it is. But if I go to the messages, I should be able to see more data. All right, so this is one of the requests coming from the uh, the web browser. This is calling slash, did it not call it twice that time? I guess it's not. Let me just make sure that that wasn't a uh, weird anomaly. Let me clear statistics. All right, so it's all been blanked out. Refresh. One. Okay, well, uh, what I did is I just set that to uh, use XML, which is what I would have normally used anyway. I guess I just used raw thinking that that would be quicker, but um, if I use XML and I have the metadata in there, then I have a lot more information at my fingertips when I go in here. Now, even though I zeroed it out, uh, I didn't delete all the messages in here, which I can do. Should just be able to do. Let's just remove the messages real quick. And we'll do like a nice clean, fresh start. And then we could put a pin on this. Now why this didn't work on Mac, uh, I, w I wanted to showcase this working in Eclipse. I don't know if it's a Mac issue, if it's a Java issue, I'm not exactly sure, but it is working perfectly fine. What am I doing? Go away. I don't want to repross anything. Reprocess, repross, did I say repross? All right, 
So let me go back here, refresh. Yay, it's working fine, woo! All right, refresh. That says two messages. Maybe I, I didn't clear statistics on the front page, but here's the request. Came from this address to this address. It was an HTTP GET. Here are the headers that came from the uh, requesting side. Here's the user agent information, blah, 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 blah. So there you go. So it's pretty simple how to uh, implement a uh, Java class inside of your transformer. As you can see, it's pretty simple. I could have just done this in one line if I really wanted to, just for kicks. I will do that so I can just show you how simple stuff like this really is and how you could, you know, take uh, you know Rhino JavaScript inside of your Mirth projects if you're ever doing any work in Mirth and how you could implement this very easily. Boom. Look at that. So I just made myself a little web service using Mirth Connect and just wrote a custom Java class that did all the work for me. So let me redeploy because obviously I got to redeploy. Let me clear my statistics. Let me call it again and if everything is fine, it should, yeah, there we go. I shouldn't notice anything different, except for when I come here, I refresh, and I see one message in, one message out. And then when I go in here, I should see that message. Okay, so I hope that this was at least somewhat fun and useful to those of you guys that enjoy the dry, boring computer tutorial stuff. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. And, uh, you know, if you guys have any topics or questions, and I will see you in the next whatever we do. Take care. Bye-bye.